with the title that says wisdom in the Bible. The fear of the Lord is not only the beginning of wisdom actually, but it also is the conclusion of the matter. The fear of the Lord here is a kind of fear that emerges from the reverence people will have for God. Wisdom is the virtue of true believers. Hello, JCS. Uh, it is always a privilege for me to be here in the chapel. And thank you so much for providing the opportunity. And I hope uh, all of you are doing great by the grace of God. Uh, I am here to share the word of God uh, with the title that says, Wisdom in the Bible. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. Let me start my sermon by sharing a story, a very short story about a knowledgeable man and wise man. There was a very knowledgeable man who was respected by many people and he was on a trip to a very rural area. He rented a boat to cross to the other side of a lake. The owner of the boat was a wise and humble man, and he was the one who controls the boat. As they were on their way to their destination, they engaged themselves in a conversation mainly initiated by the knowledgeable person. The knowledgeable man asked the wise man, do you know anything about what causes a hurricane? The wise man, responded to the knowledgeable person. No, sir, I don't know about hurricane. The knowledgeable person proudly said, I'm sorry, but uh, if you don't know this, you've lost 25% of your life. Again, the proud man asked, do you know anything about what causes the solar eclipse? The wise man replied, no, sir. And the proud man said, I am sorry, but if you don't know about this, you have lost another 25% of your life. And he continued asking another question. This time he said, do you know anything about gravity? The wise man felt really very humbled and he said, I don't know, sir. And the proud man said again, I'm sorry, but if you, do, if you don't know this, you have lost another 25% of your life. And according to uh, the knowledgeable person, the wise man is living on 25% alone. Only on 25%. Suddenly, the boat unexpectedly started to sink into the water. The wise man asked one quick question. Sir, do you know how to swim? Trembling out of fear of death, the proud man answered, no. I don't know how to swim. Then the wise man said, I'm sorry, sir, but if you don't know how to swim, you've lost 100% of your life. And the local man jumped into the water to swim to the shore. When it comes to the relationship between wisdom and knowledge, wisdom is the queen, the crown of all pieces of knowledge. Knowledge can be obtained by just having enough information about something. Unlike knowledge, wisdom goes beyond information. It goes beyond information to the level of transformation, change, practical change of life. Knowledge may be usually uh, deal with sophisticated, abstract, speculative, and analytical issues and points. But when it comes to wisdom, especially in its biblical sense, it deals with everyday life. Wisdom is one of the greatest themes we find in the scriptures. There are many stories recorded in the Bible about wisdom, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. For example, stories of wise people, 
Stories of Wise Women or Wise Wives The story of the wise King Solomon is recorded in the Old Testament very beautifully. The story of the three wise men, which we'll find towards the beginning of the account of the Gospel, the birth of Jesus. There are even books known as wisdom literature in the Old Testament. For example, the book of Proverbs, the book of Ecclesiastes, and Song of Songs are among the biblical wisdom books that we find in the Bible. The biblical wisdom deals with everyday life. It deals with universal issues, issues that goes beyond time and space limits. The biblical wisdom instructs how to survive in this world. The biblical wisdom is not a big fan of sophisticated wisdoms, analysis, philosophical questions, but it deals with survival. It teaches people how to survive in this world as people of God. It teaches how to use resources properly. Many of the, problem, the problems that we have, relationship problems, local or international, comes from the use of resources. And the wisdom from the Bible teaches us how to use resources properly and how to share resources in a fair way. The biblical wisdom teaches how to choose good friends. The subject of friendship is there, how to choose good spouses. They also instruct how to live a moral life. There is a term we often hear nowadays and it is called problem-solving skills. That is exactly what I mean by saying wisdom here. The knowledge that we accumulated in our mind needs to be transformed into the practical life. It has to be the source of our wisdom to solve the problems that we are facing day in and day out. We have many knowledgeable people around the world in history and even now, but we have few wise people. We need to turn our pieces of knowledge into problem-solving skills. There is no theoretical or speculative wisdom. Wisdom is always practical, and it focuses on survival, and it focuses on problem-solving. It gives us the wisdom to get rid of the problems that we are facing every day. The biblical wisdom mainly has two dimensions. These dimensions are known as horizontal and vertical dimensions. The vertical dimension focuses on Yahweh himself. And the horizontal dimension focuses on living life in harmony with God's creation. This is very similar with the Decalos or the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, the entire Ten Commandments, can be divided into two, vertical and horizontal. Relationship with our Heavenly Father and relationship with others. And wisdom in the Bible is the same thing. It talks about the relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father and the relationship that we will have with creation. Um, the fear of Yahweh, which is the vertical dimension of the biblical wisdom, we can find the foundational uh, teaching from the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7, which I read toward the beginning of my sermon. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The same book, the book of Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10, repeats the same thing in different way. There it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Here, wisdom in chapter 1, knowledge. The fear of the Lord is not only the beginning of wisdom actually, but it also is the conclusion of the matter. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13, it says, Now all have been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. Life will be sweet 
only when it is sandwiched in between these two kinds of fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord towards the beginning or as the beginning of everything and fear of the Lord as a conclusion of all matter. Taking the fear of the Lord both as the beginning and the conclusion of the matter makes a person wiser. But we have to notice here, when I say the fear of the Lord, I'm not referring to kind of fear that is destructive or oppressive by its nature. It is also not related with the sentiment people will develop or bad feelings that people will develop as a response to their imagination of the final judgment or the punishment that comes because of disobedience. Rather, the fear of the Lord here is a kind of fear that emerges from the reverence people will have for God. This kind of fear emerges from a healthy relationship that God's children have with their Heavenly Father. If we wanted to lead a life wiser than ever before, as Christians, we needed to begin everything from the fear of the Lord. This fear of the Lord has the power to shape humans' theory of knowledge, which is also known as epistemology. Epistemology deals with the way we obtain knowledge of any sort. And that aspect of a person will be shaped by the fear of God, or in other words, words, which I call wisdom. The second dimension of wisdom is living in harmony with God's creation. There is no wisdom greater than living in harmony with the creation order. I don't think it would be an exaggeration if I say, nowadays, many people to live Many people attempt to live a life far away from the natural order, which I personally think is unwise. Modern people mainly abstain from living in harmony with the beautiful nature and its sensation. We roped ourselves from the beautiful dawn chorus of singing birds. We roped ourselves from raising our own veggies in our backyard or we don't have enough farmland because of an unending spread of uh, industries and urban cities. The therapeutic sound of gently flowing streams of water is becoming just a dream for many people around the world. Living in harmony with God, with God's creation, is a creation mandate. Creation mandate means uh, God-given responsibilities to humankind to uh, take care of God's creation, the entire creation order. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to work it and take care of it. That is our creation mandate. God has created us in his own image and likeness to take care of his creation, to take care of all resources, to cultivate Wisdom is unthinkable to acquire unless people engage themselves to live in harmony with God's creation. There will be no wisdom of any sort apart from the creation order. And that's exactly what we learn from the Bible when we talk about wisdom. Our uh, fathers and mothers, godly people knew how to live with the fear of God. And also they knew how to live in harmony with nature. Looking at what we have done to the earth, I at times worry a lot about humans' mission on Mars. I think we still have a long way to go when it comes to living in harmony with God's creation. As my practical note or application, let me talk a little more on uh, the practical point of view here. We as human beings desperately needed wisdom at the personal, national, and international levels. 
We needed wisdom in our relationship. When it comes to family relationship, it's unfortunate to say that many families are challenged due to the lack of wisdom. Many families fall apart because of lack of wisdom. We do not know, many people do not know how to live in harmony with nature, in harmony with other human beings, and also the fear of God is fading away from time to time. When it comes to friendship, we needed to know how to choose good friends and also maintain that good friendship. And wisdom plays a remarkable role in this regard. When it comes to our relationship to our neighbors, wisdom plays a pivotal role in assisting us to peacefully live with our neighbors. You can think uh, uh, in a personal or a national level, many countries have a big problem living in harmony with their neighbors. That's why Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. And I think loving neighbor as myself or as ourselves is the most difficult uh, commandment. That is why we needed the strength that comes from the Spirit of the Lord. At the national level, if we ask, how do different people live together within one nation, respecting one another and complementing each other? This is a very crucial question. Only wisdom has the answer for that. At the national level, this is the time we needed wisdom more than ever before. Think of what is going on around the world. We need wisdom. Our leaders need wisdom. The, the global community need wisdom more than ever before. Finally, let us know and be aware and see the value of wisdom because wisdom is the virtue of true believers. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, for this morning. And thank you for the message we heard this morning, gracious and loving God. And now we ask you, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It is the beginning of wisdom. And here the conclusion of the matter, fear the Lord and keep his commandment. We want to live, Lord, our life within these two boundaries. We wanted to start everything, Heavenly Father, and having due respect for you. And also, Heavenly Father, Father, honoring the creation order that you have created, Heavenly Father, in the beginning. Lord, I pray for all of us always to have this desire of growing every day wiser and wiser by coming closer to you, gracious and loving God. We thank you for all community members of JCS, Heavenly Father, all, teacher, all teachers and uh, students, parents. Uh, we ask you, Heavenly Father, especially as students are preparing themselves now for the midterm exam, may you continue to help them to put effort on their studies, gracious and loving God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for everything. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.